All right, this is some freaking juice we're giving up today. So we're talking about fishing glide baits deeper and how to weight them properly in order to get the best action out of a bait. Because a lot of people are seeing all these people on YouTube, on Bassmasters and everything that are sinking big glide baits down and catching a lot of really big fish. But the thing is like you start adding weight to this thing and glide baits are super finicky as it is. How do we weight the bait for optimal performance when fishing deep and that's what we're going to go over today and we're going to divide it up into three different categories the first one is fishing that kind of trying to get it down two to five foot so not super deep uh, we're going to use this this is lead wire it's one millimeter you can pick this up at local fly shops uh, amazon has it and basically what we're going to do so we're starting with a bait that's super slow sink so we're talking about a foot every four to five seconds, somewhere right in there. And we want it to sink just a little bit faster. So what we're going to do is take off a good strip of this, just a nice little, uh, that's about three inches or so. And we're just going to take the bait and we're gonna wrap it around this front hook hanger. So just the front hook of the bait uh, right there. So take it and slowly just start wrapping it. You can make it as nice as neat or as messy as you want. Kind of depends on your preference. I try to go super neat. But again, this is a heavier option. Um, if you're waiting a jerk bait or something, you're probably going to want to go with a little bit smaller of an option. But we're just wrapping that around the shank of the front hook. I know my, fi I'm fat, my fat fingers are in the way, making it hard to see. And then after we get done wrapping this, we'd have it on some line and put it down in the water and see how much further and how much faster it sinks. So that's about what we're looking like for a slower sink. So like fishing that, uh, trying to get it down two to five foot somewhere in there. Now, where we really start messing with baits is when we're trying to get it down even deeper. So we try to go five to 10. Um, so the big thing is we don't want to affect the action of the bait. So as a bait maker, I designed this bait to sink in a very, very specific way. The weighting of this thing is correct and it's been through the, pro the trials and tribulations in order to get this thing to actually act right. Um, and every bait maker is that way as well. Every bait maker wants their head to sink a little bit a certain way as in proportion to the tail. But the main thing we don't wanna mess up is the proportions of the rate of fall. When we're just adding a little bit of weight, a little bit of weight to the front's all right. But when we start adding a lot of weight to the front, we wanna add a little bit to the back too. Now the one big, th where you really start getting into trouble and you really start losing action is when you add a lot of weight to the tail and not as much to the head. Great way to, to test this is on my baits, we leave this pin on, exposed on the back just a little bit. I don't know if you can kind of see it there, try to get to focus. There's a pin on the back. What I'll do is I'll take a pair of side dikes. I'll pull that pin and I'll fill up my live wells in my boat and I will put them, they put the pin back in the tail and then put both pieces in the actual live well itself. And you'll see how the head sinks compared to the tail. When it's got no weight on it directly from the factory, that's how that's the pr proportions that we want it to sink. So if we want it to sink really, really fast, we're gonna add a bunch of weight to the, uh, we're gonna see how they both sink individually, and then we're gonna add a bunch of weight to the head and a little bit to the tail, and try to keep that same proportions because the tail is going to be closer to neutrally buoyant as opposed to the head, which is going to sink a little bit faster. Uh, but yeah, that's the big thing that you've got to keep in mind is keeping the sinking proportional to how the manufacturer had it from the factory originally. Um, if you follow that principle guideline, you're, you're, you're gonna be all right. Um, there are certain instances where if the head sinks way too fast compared to the tail, you'll start not being able to get as wide of a gliding bait, uh, but it's still gonna chop pretty well in the water. Um, but again, the biggest issues that I see when guys are like, man, I've put a bunch of weight on this thing. I can't get a good action out of it anymore. Generally what they did was they added too much weight to the tail. That's the biggest mistake I see. So the final weighting method we're going to talk about with these big swim baits is fishing super deep, like 15 to 25, really getting these big baits down there. Now at this depth, physics is really starting to work against you because as, as you can tell, like a glide bait doesn't have a bill. It doesn't have anything that's naturally just pulling it down besides the weight that we're at, the negative buoyancy through the weight we're adding to make it get down deeper. So at a certain point, 
regardless of how fast you're trying to fish it, the line is going to try to pull this bait up. Um, but there's certain things we can do to actually fish effectively at that, at that depth. So on the clutch boss, um, we're going to pull this pin that's on the back, separating into two different halves. So we're going to look at the head. The head has got a couple holes here. And what we're going to do is take a little piece of a split shot. This is a number five and we're going to put it right in if if there's room in the bottom hole, put it in the bottom hole. If there's not room in the bottom hole, put it in that middle hole. And the, then what we're going to do is put a dot of super glue in there to hold it in place because we don't want that weight falling back, interfering with the joint. We want to make sure it's held in there. So a dot of super glue in there. Um, as far as size of weights, I know guys like my buddy Brock goes all the way up to a three eighths of an ounce that he's putting in the cavity of this bait to make it really get down there. Um, and then basically once the super glue is on there, you put the bait back together, grab the pin, put it back in there, grab your side dikes and push it back together. So that's kind of the rundown about weighting these big swim baits. You really want to make sure that your proportions, you, you keep those, you keep those proportions throughout your weighting process. You don't want the tail to be too heavy and you really don't want the head being too heavy in comparison to the tail. Uh, so, Kind of good rule of thumb if you're scared to mess with it add the same amount of weight to the head and the tail with that lead wire uh, and again if you're fishing super shallow just a little bit of lead wire around that front hook hanger that's not going to hurt your action at all uh, but it's going to allow it to get down there a little bit deeper so keep these general rules in mind when you're trying to fish these glide baits deeper and trying to live scope with them um, if you have any questions put them in the comments down below and i'll try to respond to as many of them as possible thanks guys